and in 10th place just out of sight there was John Solly but but Kip Coet is really stretching down the back straight now he's applying the pressure and he is a front runner they they all the Africans love to front run but he's stretching and and Panetta glanced over his shoulder there and then in third place Vainio is starting to make a run for it but if, if Kip Coet keeps slowing like this then uh, then Panetta is better off letting him go and catching him rather than trying to go with a burst because Europeans are trained to run conservatively and spread their energy over the race but these Africans living at altitude can can handle the changes of pace much much easier and I think if Panetta might be wisely there just closing that gap and let Co Kip Koech do it all again oh Paul Kip Koech there is a nandy from the Rift Valley Ninth in the 1983 World 5000 Meter Championships. He's come second in the international cross country. There's Steve Binns in the center of your picture. And I was just going to say of Paul Kipkoich, his name means dawn or something like it. He was born at 5.30 a.m. and it was a lovely day and his name actually means at the start of a fine day. So if the early bird catches the worm, he's going to be up there and he really has opened a big gap now. It's something like 20 meters over Panetta. And I think that uh, it's fair to say that if if Vainio remains in third place, having been twice found guilty of taking uh, banned substances, I for one, and I think Bren Brendan Foster and many others will be disappointed if he walks away from these championships with a medal. I'd like to join that club too. But the truth is, I think Kipkoic has been kidding people. He's been making bursts of two and three hundred yards and then slowing it right down. But this time he's kept going. Panetta, I think, wanted to go with him, thought he was going to slow down again, relaxed, but Kipkoic in typical Kenyan fashion, went again. Right, six laps to go. But then we're in second place. Third is Vainio. Fourth is Barrios. Fifth is Kunza. And then uh, little Steve Buns just behind Kunza. And Marcus Riffle just behind Bins. So Bins at the moment, a gallant run by him. He's just about in touch with a medal. Kenya lead. Italy second. Finland third. Barrios of Mexico in fourth place. Five is Kunza of East Germany, six Great Britain and Bins. Seventh, Ripple of Switzerland who's dropping. And in eighth place, leading the rest of the pack, John Sully of Great Britain. But every time he goes down the back straight there, Kip Koech seems to accelerate the pace. And he's running freely. The first 5,000 metres was quite slow, so he wouldn't be terribly tired when he got to that 5,000 metre mark. But as I was saying earlier, the Kenyans and the uh, Ethiopians can handle this change of pace much more easily than the Europeans can. And, you know, he maybe was kidding a little earlier on because he burst away and then they all caught him again. But he looks strong and he looks comfortable. And now the pressure is being transferred into second place because Panetta is beginning to struggle a little. And the group led by Barrios and then Kunza, the East German, and Vainio, the Finn. And a great run by Steve Bins in sixth place there. And uh, they're catching Panetta. They're certainly catching Panetta and Vainio's fading a little bit. Been swallowed up by the others tucked in now back in sixth place but they're making no impression on the African who seems now to have stretched his lead to about 35 to 40 meters Panetta had a lot of support but he's going to need all the help he can get now because he really is wallowing Kipkoic looking very very easy with that lithe action that so many of the Africans possess coming up now to lap some of the other runners Panetta stocky built like a boxer really in second place finding it very very hard and the Italians are going to be so disappointed be a great blow to their morale because they were banking on this man to follow Kova as the world champion Kova who's uh, had training problems and not able to defend his title so Panetta there is in second place in the following group led by Barrios of Mexico we've got Kunza of East Germany Steve Bins of Great Britain and Vainio of Finland and they've got three laps to go if Paul Kipkoic can keep this up, it will be a tremendous boost for Kenya, who were flagging. They, a lot of their athletes went to American colleges and they lost contact with home. Now they've just staged the African Championships in Nairobi. They were an immense success. President Arab Moy attended every day the track and field. And what's more, it's rumoured he might be coming here because he was so uh, pulled by the success. He thinks that Kenya can get back on the map through their great athletes. And this will be a tremendous boost to that country who's done so much to put the third world on the athletic map well he's loving athletes and i hope they begin to move out because otherwise he could be in trouble coming down the back straight there because there's a bunch of them that he's going to lap but panetta in second place is really in no man's land but he's a tough customer 
He's got two and a half, two and a quarter laps to go, and now he's digging in. But it's a tough position to dig in from when he's in second place and he's worried about that. And the group behind are beginning to chase. Well, the group behind will have a bit of relief here because uh, when uh, the leader went past the lap marker, they'd made a mistake and they left three up there, switched it to two after he'd gone past. Uh, so he may be a, a little bit uh, surprised and wondering whether he's got three to go or two to go. But in fact, of course, it should have shown two to go. So he's just got over a lap and a half left. That's Bulti being uh, lapped, one of the great Ethiopians, and John Tracy, the former World Cross Country Champion, both being lapped uh, by the Kenyan. Paul Kipkovic. The Panetta banners wave, but Panetta can do nothing about this at all. But looking back, Panetta's uh, going again now and re-establishing himself, but he's got away from the uh, group chasing for third place, but he's making no impression at all on Kipkovic. This time, unless there's been some uh, mistake with the lap counter, it's still showing two to go. Well, I... Th and now they've shown one. They've got the long leader. I knew they'd made a mistake before. They've got it totally wrong. For Panetta, they're showing one. And they've missed the leader because he's lapping people. Steve Binns, by the way, has gone into third place. Kunza four. Barrios five. Bayonio in sixth place. So what must Kip Coet be thinking now? Panetta there in second place in the blue. But the Kenyan must be totally puzzled. Well, the lap marker keeps switching backwards and forwards, and looking at the lap times, no wonder there's confusion. It can't be the last lap, but he has been shown the one to go. It's back there again, but the clock shows it isn't. They showed it to Benetta then, one to go. He's gained encouragement, and indeed, Benetta is now gaining on Kipkoic. He should hear the bell this time. And this time he gets it. Well, the lap marker has been a total disaster. Panetta in second place. Uh, Kunza closing now in third place. Barrios is fourth. And Barrios thinks he's finished. He's stopped and had to start again. Binz has stopped as well. And it's not over. Bainio stopped as well. The thing is chaos. All the chasing runners have stopped. And only the leaders have gone. It is a total disaster. Little Steve Binz on his way again. But... Thank goodness it's not affected the leading places. That is the only saving grace. It might have affected the medals, but it's not affected the winner. And Kip Kovac storming away with the battle on for second place between Panetta and Kunza. Kip Kovac comes home to win the World Championship. The African champion in chaotic scenes, becomes the champion of the world. And in second place, Panetta finds new life and sprints home. He will take the silver medal. And in third place, with the bronze, Kunza of East Germany. So the leading place is possibly not affected too much. But what a mess. Barrios finishes in fourth place. Steve Binns, a very courageous fifth followed by Rabel of Czechoslovakia, who's come from nowhere thanks to people stopping. Andriopoulos is next of Greece. But in a major championship, I've never seen such a tangle. I thought there was something wrong with the lap counter. They kept switching it backwards and forward. I began to believe we've actually got the watch wrong and believe they'd got it right. But no way. A total, total mix-up, uh, which affected many of the athletes down the field who were running for places and who stopped. Well, David, didn't affect the winner, Kip Koec, but when you've run 25 laps, the officials have only got to count the laps and you've got to run them. It's an absolute disgrace and it really did affect the result and I could see one or two of the boys crossing the line and thinking, do I keep going or do I stop now? Barrios stopped, Steve Bin stopped, uh, Vianio didn't even run on for the next lap, so... Um, this whole thing was absolute chaos, and I'm, I've never seen anything in it in my life. But I'll tell you, if I'd been running in that, and I'd been in third or fourth place coming up to the last lap, it would have been a total disgrace. So, 
Kip Kovac rightly becomes the champion of the world. And a new world championship best time of 27 minutes, 38.63 seconds. Steve Binns, we think finished in fifth place, is approximate time, 28 minutes, 3 seconds, with Solly back uh, way down, 28.32. Well, as it turned out, a chaotic race and chaotic weather conditions in southern Spain means that tonight's world title fight involving Lloyd Hunnigan is now off, postponed till tomorrow night. You will not see that later on. But we'll be back at 10.15 with highlights of the day's athletics. And it's clear that Africa has made its mark already on these championships.